good afternoon choices. I am about to do a pantry talk with our partners at Good morning, FDHA. My name is Chef Ashley. We will be having our pantry talk and lunch and learn today uh, via Zoom. So as you join us, we will uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. So yesterday, um, some of you guys saw our pantry talk that we did. So this is a, another chance, a bonus chance for you to check it out. So as you... Hello, welcome to Pantry Talk with Chef Ashley. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes as people join in. Hey, Sherrod. Good morning, Choices World. We are here with FDHA, our wonderful partners, and we're going to do a pantry talk in just a few minutes. Hello there out there in Zoom. My name is Chef Ashley Keys, and we're going to do something called a pantry talk. So I know we're all stuck at home, and we're trying to figure out how we are going to be creative in the kitchen. And I'm going to discuss a few ways that you can be creative if you have any questions possibly about items you have in your pantry and how you can make those healthier or just how to prepare them, feel free to um, just raise your hand or put it in the comment section, in the chat uh, section, and we will read those off uh, throughout our conversation. And feel free to uh, share your screen with us or share um, any photos that you might have or ingredients that you're asking questions about. Um, via your camera. So we'll get started in about a minute to two minutes. We'll wait a few more people to join. Right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, FDHA, for allowing me to uh, do this virtually today. We were supposed to be at the FDHA office having this wonderful lunch and learn, but we are here today um, kind of adapting uh, to our new social distancing um, so that none of us get sick and catch this um, virus. Um, so we are going to talk about um, I'm calling this pantry talk because right now we have all gone out to the grocery stores. We have loaded up our buggies and we have brought all this food home. And how do we make sure over the next 14, 15, two weeks, three weeks, they say that we need to shelter in place if need be. How do we make sure that this food doesn't go to waste um, with our kids being home? I know the fridge is getting opened up a lot more and the pantry is being opened up a lot more. 
Um, so we just want to talk about how to adapt to these changes that are happening. Um, and we want to just make sure that, you know, you're still being healthy and you're still taking care of um, your, you know, dietary needs that might be if you have hypertension or type 2 diabetes or any other uh, illnesses or um, lifestyle changes that you have to adapt to over these next couple of weeks. So if you have any questions, if you're on Zoom, just raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Or if you're on Facebook Live watching, you can just put it in the comment section. Just um, let us know if you have any questions. We're going to talk about meals. We're going to talk about how to bulk up your diet with um, grains and wellness and things like that. So um, making sure you're staying hydrated, making sure you're washing your hands at least 20 seconds with warm soapy water. Those type of things are going to help us uh, fight this virus and not to uh, be receivers and carriers of it. Okay? So... Um, a little about me. My name is uh, Chef Ashley Keys of Choices. I'm the executive chef of Choices, the center helping obesity in children and successfully. We have a kitchen in downtown Atlanta where we do cooking classes and workshops. We're a culinary hub for health. And so today I'm at home um, in my own kitchen giving this talk, but this is a great way to share um, right now with your neighbors and your community partners and like another way to show them how to be healthy and sharing some of these tips. So feel free to uh, share this um, or anything I'm giving, information I'm giving you. And you can continue to, you know, ask questions if you need be, um, or if you have any ideas, you know, people we like to share um, this event. Um, this is a great time for us to start, um, you know, sharing everything. So we are glad you are here. So the first thing I want to talk about is breakfast. We need to continue to kind of keep a schedule like we would normally do, even though we're home, working from home, kids are home from school. It's kind of chaotic right now, but the best thing to do is keep a simple schedule, starting off with breakfast every morning. Um, it could be simple as a piece of toast and fruit, or it could be as complex as you scrambling some eggs and some veggies, making a scramble of some sort, or you can go into the whole pancakes and pull out the waffle make how far you have you want to go but it's about keeping a schedule so if you're not used to eating breakfast maybe this is a time to start to help build your immune system by using some grains and some trying oatmeal things that you might not normally eat for breakfast trying some new things maybe an avocado toast where you get a serving of vegetables in the morning so you can build your system up with good vitamins and minerals and healthy foods versus us you know i know like i have myself i have my bag of potato chips but i'm trying to wait to open those so that they can last as long as they can because somehow potato chips are one of my things that will go and i'm like where did they go <laughs> i don't know um because i'm sitting there grazing mindlessly while watching tv you know you can start watching tv and later two shows later your chips are gone or your popcorn's gone so i try to do those type of things um so we're going to talk about plenty of stuff so for my breakfast what i like to start out with uh, some easy things is such as like a baked oatmeal and I have none of these companies sponsor us. These are just things from my pantry. Um, like this is a whole grain oatmeal. So what I like to do with this is bake it or if I make it on the stove, I'll make enough for like two or three days where all I got to do is add some fresh fruit, a little milk or a little water to thin it back out to make it to that consistency that you're looking for. And I'll make this. This is rolled oats. This is the long cook time. The short cooked ones are basically, they take these, they crunch them up, they cut them in like half or in thirds, and they roll them out again um, after they're semi-cooked, and then they dry them out. So they cook a lot faster, so it doesn't take as much moisture to cook the oat. I like these rolled oats because they keep me full longer. And when I'm doing oatmeal, I also like to bulk it up with some other things, which is chia seeds, or I have flaxseed. Which I'll also put like in a smoothie or I'll do like a um, flaxseed or chia seed pudding. Um, when I use flaxseed a lot of times, um, that's a great egg supplement if you like to bake. I'll also do hemp seed. Um, and I'll grind these up in a smoothie also or t uh, throw them in like a dish that, you know, kids, you can hide these um, vitamins and minerals in. And these are great um, healthy boosters to your immune system. So I like to also make a chia seed gel, which is also a good hydration system. So I just put chia seeds in water. I don't know if you can see it, it's like a sludge. It got really thick. This is about 20 minutes of sitting. 
um, and I made this right before we got started about 1130 and you see it's thickened up and I'll throw this eat a spoonful of this this is a great electrolyte to hydrate yourself you can turn this into a pudding um, this is also a great eggs replacer so a lot of vegans will use chia seeds or flax seeds and turn these into egg replacers you put it in water and then it gets slushy and it combines so a lot of people use that when baking for egg supplements um when i do a baked oatmeal i like to put like cinnamon and ginger some fresh fruit or frozen fruit uh, right now is a great time to have frozen fruit because it is uh it will stay longer so you can use frozen fruit for smoothies you can use frozen fruit for popsicles or just snacking um so those are the types of things so if you have like a pineapple and it's not getting eaten too fast put it on a sheet tray and freeze it if you have canned fruit and you want to make a smoothie I would also open it up um, and make sure that you drain the juice. You want 100% juice. You do not want fruit in syrup because it has a lot more added sugar. Um, so when you see cans of fruit that say in syrup or uh, heavy uh, light syrup, that means it's added sugar. You want to go with things that say no, uh, no sugar added or 100% juice. And that juice you can use, as you can see here, it says 100% juice. And you can use this juice to make your smoothie, to add to your smoothie. You can use this juice to infuse your water that you're going to drink. You want to continue to drink a lot of water to flush your system, even while you're at home. This is a good time. You don't have to worry about bathroom breaks. You know there's a bathroom right by. You can drink a gallon of water a day and be okay. Um, you want to drink as much water as you can. You know, we're still talking about, oh, we're home and the kids want the soda pop or the juice, but... Try to cut that back by doing sparkling water if you have it. This is all about what you have in your pantry. So it's not going out to the stores. It's not going out um, and buying stuff or ordering stuff. But it's about what you have right now. Because the stores might not have it. When I say, okay, use canned fruit. But if you don't have, if you have canned fruit but it's in heavy syrup, just rinse it and throw the syrup down the garbage disposal. And use that to, um, and then use the fruit after you rinse it off so that you can, you know, you can put it in the freezer and make a smoothie or you can eat it without having a lot of added sugar. So I like to do that. The next thing um, that I like to talk about because we have kids at home right now is snacking. That's a major, I know, thing that's going on. Um, so what I like to do when I'm doing snacking is use like these kind of things, these fruit snacks, these are not fruits. These is not a serving of fruit. This is a snack for a kid to have. And these are like cheese crackers. I like to put them in portion bags because this box right here, if I look at the label, it tells me it has seven uh, servings and it's 51 crackers. So you get 51 little uh, bunnies. And I like to put them in bags so that when the kids go get one to help also with the spread of germs, you can um, put them in a little portion bag or snack bags. These I get from Walmart have measuring cups already on it. So this is a cup, three-fourths cup, half a cup, or a quarter cup. And this helps with portions. So if you have a cereal, and you can always use this guide, or you can portion it via a measuring cup and then pour it into the thing and see how it matches. But you can use these portion bags. I like them because kids will say, okay, let me, I won't throw this box away. What I'll do is take the bag out portion them out and put them back in the box so that the kid knows when they open this box they're going to get one Ziploc bag versus saying here okay pour out 50 crackers and then they might get 60 or 70 or close to 100 which would be two servings because they did not count properly okay so um our other snacks that we like to have when we say these fruit snacks are these are, I would say, good, better, or best, or go slow and whoa. These are a slow go um, because these have a little bit, these are cleaner, I would say, than um, other fruit snacks that are in the stores. There are no artificial flavors, no uh, corn syrup, and made with real fruit juices, and they're organic, and they're made with honey, sweet with honey rather than sugar. So these are also alternative fruit snacks. They are a little bit more costly, but these are a better choice if you had to choose an option. But whatever you have at home right now is all right. Another option to do is if your kids have trouble eating vitamins, but they like vitamin gummies, open this pack, put those two vitamin gummies or whatever the serving is for the day, put it back in them, hand them back the fruit snacks, and they eat their vitamins. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, another thing I like to do with cereal is also use portion bags. So 
this box says uh, 14 servings. But like what I like to do with it is make sure there's 14 servings. A lot of times when you go pour a bowl of cereal, you can try this with your kids while you're at home. Say, pour yourself a bowl of cereal. All right, and then mom, you're gonna go pull the label, read the label, see what it says for a serving size, and then you're gonna re-measure it and show them they might have one and a half, two and a half, or sometimes three size, three times the, uh, the serving size. So when you think about that, why are the kids eating so much cereal? Because they don't, they try to get full. Cereal is not the best thing for breakfast at all times. Sometimes it can be. If you're going for a low sugar cereal, which is, I look for it in under nine, if the kids aren't gonna go for those wheats or those um, Cheerios and they're like, oh, I need something sweet to make my cereal sweet, use fresh fruit. Um, also, the type of milk you're using. I know not everyone can do dairy milk anymore, so you can do almond or uh, soy or goat or cashew. You also want to look for unsweetened milks um, that don't have the sugar, such as a plain um, nut milk or dairy milk. You do not want to use like the vanilla milks or the bananas. You want to look for unsweetened. If your kids are having to wean off of that, mix the two so that they can, um, they won't know. Save the containers. It's all about whatever you can do to get the kids to get healthier, but they don't mentally, they think they're getting the real thing, but they're eating something healthier. That's the uh, best way to kind of do it and also to get them to educate them little by little because while they're home, they don't understand that they can't eat 10 times and then they're not outside playing they're sitting playing video games so they have to still get moving and how do we do that walking around the house go into the park um just getting them moving even if they walk around the house and do a scavenger hunt or they're walking outside uh in the cul-de-sac or just you know bouncing the ball outside but getting them moving getting some fresh air so that they can um you know move and still eat and enjoy their life and still be safe the next thing I want to talk about is some canned items, such as soups and beans. Um, so I have this can of soup here, um, and this is a hearty minstrel, and this is a serving, they're saying. So if I was to eat this whole can for one serving, my lunch would say, I would get 10 grams of fat, right? If I shared it with somebody, I would get six, so it's half, or a little bit more than half. Um, my sodium, if I eat this whole can, is 1,120 milligrams, which is a lot, especially if you have hypertension. That's almost your full daily um, amount. If you don't have hypertension, it's still a lot, and I would still not tell anyone to eat this whole can of soup um, because, yes, it has a lot of vegetables. It has spinach. It has leeks. It has barley. That's our grain. We have lentils. So this is a very hearty soup, but it's not enough to me to feel like I'm getting a lot of vegetables. I would say if I was to make this soup, I would add more vegetables. So even adding some, you know, green peas, some carrots, some zucchini, some fresh spinach to the soup and letting it um, saute those vegetables for just a few minutes before I added the soup to finish heating it up. That's what I would do to make the soup more power pack, more vitamins. I might add some ginger or turmeric, some fresh garlic to make it feel real or to feel alive. You know, you are what you eat. So you want to make sure you're eating um, things that are great for you and that make you feel good. You don't want to eat something right now and be like, oh, I need to take a nap because we don't want to sleep as much. We want to move as much as possible. We're going to talk about some beans here and some tuna. Um, this is a can of tuna in water. You want to look for tuna that's in water right now. You don't want tuna in oil because that's more fat. And when you're usually making tuna salad, what do you do? You add mayo, which is pretty much oil and egg. Um, and you add the relish, the sweet relish. You add some sugar, usually some mustard. So, and then you add the paprika to make it look pretty. So, what I would like to do with this tuna is turn it into a lighter, like a, use a vinaigrette-based uh, salad dressing for it. That makes sure that you can, instead of using mayo, I can do some Greek yogurt, some carrots, some um, bell peppers, some red onion, some nice uh, seasoning, some little Mrs. Dash or no salt seasoning, some garlic, any dried herbs that you possibly have, and maybe a little Dijon and make it lighter. You can use some crackers, some stone ground crackers, or you can make it on a bed of salad and use this as like a nice protein. You can make tuna cakes, you can do um, like you would do like a salmon croquette, but do it with tuna. So those are some options to do. And this is a great protein source. This can is um, two servings and you get 24 grams of protein per 
serving. So, or per, you get 12 grams of protein per serving. So, that's a great protein source and it's low in sodium. Um, yeah, it only has 180 milligrams of sodium, which is really good. So, we're going to talk about beans. We're going to talk about canned beans and dry beans. So, these are black beans, low sodium, and these are some baby lima beans dried. And why I like beans right now, I like them both canned and dried. I want to, if you have in your pantry, look for low sodium. When you're buying canned beans, look for low sodium or no salt beans. Um, what I like to do with my beans is rinse them off. If they do have salt, it's okay. What you're going to do is rinse them off. You're going to take all that gook that was on the bean, cooked with the beans, the water, and you're going to rinse them, and then you're going to have the beans loose. And that means you can do anything with them at that point. You can do a black bean and veggie wrap. You can do a black bean soup. You can add it to a can of baked beans. I like to do that and call them calico beans, adding different colored beans together. And I can turn it into baked beans. Or I can take these dry beans, soak them overnight. If you have an Instapot, you can cook your beans in 35 minutes, not soak. Um, so those are types of things you can do. You can do this vegetarian or you can do it with a piece of smoked turkey. Or you can just cook them um, with some nice vegetables, some onions, some bell pepper, and have a very some garlic and have some black beans and cornbread. Sounds really good. Or some lima beans and cornbread. Um, so those are some things that you can do with my calico beans. I like to take these, or rinse these, and add them to these with some kidney beans, pinto beans, any type of bean pretty much. And then I'll do some, if I want to do them with meat, I'll do like some ground turkey, cook it off, fold it in with some fresh bell peppers and onions, add them to my baked beans, add my other beans with it. And then I'll put them in the oven and bake like a baked bean. And they'll still have the sweet tanginess, but it also has some more fiber from the beans. So it'll be kind of like a little stew at that point. Um, okay, any questions, please put it down in the chat if you have any questions so that we can make sure um, we answer any questions you have. It might be something in your pantry. It might be something that you have um, just a question about. What I also like to do is heat pasta in my pantry. The best type of pasta is whole wheat, but for right now we didn't have any whole wheat, so we just used some um, farfalle pasta. And the other day I did a pasta bake which is basically like I just took some ground turkey and turkey Italian sausage. I took some bell peppers, onions. I had some mushrooms in my fridge from last week, some eggplants, uh, eggplant chopped up, and I sauteed all my vegetables. And then I added it to my tomato paste and my tomato sauce, and I blended it all up. And I made my spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce with all those fresh vegetables that were cooked. And then I added it to my meat and made a bake with some fresh mozzarella and some Parmesan. So that's a good meal that will stretch. Um, we'll probably eat some more of that tonight. We didn't eat it last night, so we can have it alternate um, leftovers. And to make sure that we can um, get all our veggies in um, through that also. So I did that. I made a pot of collard greens that were vegan um, with just some bell peppers and onions. So that we froze half, we eat half, freeze half, so that when... We're ready for more we can take it out the freezer thaw it out and we're ready to go so it's like i'm cooking in batches right now so that i don't have to worry about okay what we're we gonna have tomorrow cooking every day it doesn't have to happen any questions i see a question about deli meat so um the best del type of deli meat is a low sodium deli meat right now if you whatever you have in your fridge is great but you want to look for a low sodium deli meat in general because um as African Americans, most of us do have hypertension or high blood pressure, so we want to look for something that's low in sodium, where you control the amount of salt that's on there. Because a lot of deli meats are uh, packaged and soaked and brined in sodium and salt. All right. Um, another thing I like to use for my grains is quinoa or brown rice. So quinoa is a great uh, pairing tool with brown rice, cooking them together in some low sodium chicken stock or vegetable stock or broth. And just so you know the difference, stock is the bones of the meat and broth is the meat, the flesh being boiled. So you get a stronger flavor from the stock than you do broth. But this is quinoa. This is brown rice. I like to use both. Um, if you're looking for a low carb, the quinoa is better than the brown rices. So with quinoa, there's red, black, and white quinoa um, that you see in the grocery store. I'm gonna open it up so you can get a better picture. 
And it looks like little snails, um, as you can see here. It looks like little snails, little rocks. And they open up into little curls and they bloom. Um, they cook like a pot of rice. You can get them done in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, in an Instapot, um, normally it's a one to one ratio in the Instapot. If you're cooking in a pot of rice, it's usually two to one. So just remember that. Any questions? All right, we're wrapping up on our time. Um, another thing I like to remember is in the pantry sometimes, uh, we might have sardines. This is a great, um, this is a great uh, supplement to, um, but you want to make sure you choose ones that are low in sodium. I know they have mustard ones. I know they have uh, ones that have hot sauce. You usually eat salt sardines. I know my grandparents used to eat sardines with crackers, saltines. So you want to make sure you're eating, um, again, low sodium is key right now. We want to stay hydrated. We don't want to be dehydrated. Um, salt um, is not a good thing right now. So we can, you can put these in pasta. You can eat them on a sandwich. Um, you can saute these a little bit um, and crisp them up so that these are in water. So you can crisp these up and make them into a pasta dish with some fresh tomatoes and vegetables. Um, you also want to stay hydrated. And this is another way to get your vitamins. It turns fizzy, so the kids might say this is like a soda. Um, this is an emergency. I take a packet of this and eight ounces of cold water. And I uh, drink this every day, sometimes twice a day, depending on how my body's feeling. And I'm getting my vitamin C rather than drinking orange juice. I know this has less uh, sugar than a glass of orange juice. So I like to do this. Um, always consult with your doctor before trying something new. And then um, other thing I like to have is some protein bars. So that I can, um, if all fails, if I am not feeling like cooking, I can have a nice protein bar. And these are great because they have real ingredients in them. They're clean. So they have dates, peanuts, egg whites, chocolate, peanut oil, and salt. You can know everything that's in there without having to look on the label and say, what is this word? What is that word? You know what's in there already. So great to have uh, some protein bars in your pantry if you don't have them. Um, these are some great ones to have or a Laura bar or, um, yeah, those are pretty much the ones I like to go with. Um, so we are, all right, um, let's talk about some other things. How do I stay hydrated? So at home, I'm still keeping a water bottle on the day basis this is uh 32 ounces so i drink this three times um so i know i'm getting you know my fair share of water you're trying to go for a gallon a day if you aren't used to drinking that much water i know that's 16 cups um start off with your body weight take that in half and turn that into ounces so if i'm 150 pounds i'm drinking 75 ounces of water which is about nine cups of water a little less about yeah because eight yeah so you want to try to drink about, you know, half your daily body weight, get up to a gallon. This is a great time to start training your body to, um, water is water. Uh, I know there's alkaline, I know it's purified, I know there's spring, I know it's sparkling, I know it's flat. Just get water, whatever way you can get it. As long as it's not sweetened, if you are having to sweeten your water, use agave. Um, I know they make Crystal Light. I know they make all types of packages and things like that. But you want to try to get as natural as possible. I like to sweeten my water if I have to with some fruit. The other day I did a blood orange and mint water. It was really clean and crisp. But that was my way to, okay, I wasn't feeling like drinking plain water. But I got some vitamin C in through those blood oranges and the mint. Just gave me a nice purifying water to drink. Um, you can slice a lemon or a lime or put a squeeze of lemon juice or lime juice um, in there. You can take ginger and turmeric and make a tea and drink that cold or hot. Those are great things to use um, right now. Um, you can take strawberries and oranges. You can take all types of things. Anything pretty much fruit. Cucumbers, take those, put them in your water. As long as you keep it chilled. Um, you're good throughout the day or even a couple days after. Um, you can make a big pitcher of water and infuse it, or you can do like a cup and just keep ice, keep your water chilled so that the fruit and vegetables don't spoil. Um, another thing I'm seeing is people like are buying, okay, how do I buy this meat? Because meat's not always in stores when you go into the store. So what I like to say is I like to keep 
my freezer full of proteins, vegetables, frozen things that I'd be buying from the store when you go are frozen vegetables, frozen fruit, um, canned goods, low sodium canned goods, uh, dried grains, dried beans, um, whole grain bread because they will last longer. You can take a loaf of bread, put them in individual Ziploc bags or wrap them up in um, plastic wrap and put it back in that bag and freeze it and take out two at a time. So versus uh, germs and like kids like, oh, go make a sandwich. But they know they can go take the bread out the freezer. They're not touching all the slices of bread because guess what? They're wrapped up individually. And they can go grab one. They t bread isn't that long to thaw. Within like 10, 15 minutes, it should be thawed. Or you can grill it and the bread will be thawed a lot quicker if you want a grilled sandwich. But that is a great way to um, keep your bread lasting longer. Put, you can freeze cheese. You can freeze milk. You can freeze uh, pasta, you can freeze meats, cooked or frozen or raw. So there's all types of things. Like the other day we did, it was uh, this Sunday we made some steaks. We were like, okay, we're not going to cook them all. We're not going to eat them all right now. So let's freeze them after we cook them. Um, we have some chicken breast that's in the freezer, cooked and raw. So it's just more about making sure you're prepared. If fruit's about to go bad in your fridge, if you have grapes and strawberries that are about to go bad, blend them up in some 100% juice and turn it into a sorbet. And that's a nice, uh, cool treat for the kids to have in the afternoon. If you're struggling to get dinner on the table with your family because you're home working and everyone else is just chilling after the afternoon after they've gotten done with their schoolwork, you can say... All right, team one is mom and daughter, and team two is dad and son. And y'all can say you're in charge of dinner tonight. Tomorrow, you're in charge of uh, lunch and alternate that way. Then the other team cleans up and the other team cooks so that it's not as stressful. Getting everyone in the kitchen together as a family is a good way to communicate um, and help teach your children. So um, any other questions that we might have? I want to say thank you again for joining us today. Um, I know we are all trying to social distance ourselves, and I hope you are home and your family is safe. And we are just all trying to stay strong and so that we can be healthy. And, you know, once we get out of all this craziness and we all are back to normal, we'll be back, you know, in our jobs and having classes again. So um, I am just glad that, you know, we're able to communicate via social media and through these technologies that are here now. Any questions? I do see a question about soups. So yes, as we were talking earlier about soups, um, this is a great brand because this is an organic company. And if you don't know what the difference is organic, versus conventional organic means it's no chemicals grown. So most likely in this soup, it means the uh, vegetables are organic. The It doesn't tell you on the label how much of this is organic. Um, so I cannot say, but I'm assuming just because it is a brand, the vegetables, the broth, um, pretty much all the ingredients here are organic. Um, so you want to look for low sodium soups, even making a soup of your own. You can get some chicken breast, some carrots, celery, onions, some bouillon stock, um, and make your own soup at home. And it can be, you know, you can do a creamy soup or we want to stay away from creamy right now because of the mucus and stuff that it creates in our system. You want to go more brothy rather than going more dairy. So doing a chicken soup, doing a chicken chili. Or even doing a turkey chili. Um, those are great things to do. Tomato-based soups. Vegetables. As much vegetables you can get in in a day you can do. You want to do. And we want to get, um, on a daily average, five to seven vegetables and three to four fruits a day. So when you're looking at, okay, am I getting my fruits in? Am I getting my vegetables in? And another way to do that is look at the rainbow. You want to make sure you're getting a rainbow a day. So if you don't have all the colors eaten by the end of the day, you know that means you didn't get all your servings of fruits and vegetables. Any other questions? Well, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we will be back in touch um, in the future with more uh, pantry talks. Um, and if you want to follow me on social media, for those who are on FDHA, you can find us at Choices, F-O-R Kids, 
org or hashtag choices the number four kids via um facebook and instagram and we're going to be doing more pantry talks um throughout this um series we might be doing some live cooking demos so we will keep you abreast thank you so much for joining us Thank you, Facebook, for joining us. We'll be back um, later on this week, possibly with an online cooking demo, and we'll go from there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment um, when you're watching this playback or any questions that you may have. We will, um, we will uh, try to answer those uh, as quickly as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye.